So continuing our discussion on vectors, let's talk about how do you create vectors. Um, create vectors in a lot of different ways. Uh, the first way is um, what I call direct entry. Um, which is just entering the values in. So it's like the example I showed um, a little earlier. Uh, if I have vector A, and I'm using the capital uh, variable name here, but if I have vector A equals 2, 5, 7, 1, 3. There you go. Um, there's vector A. Uh, so I define it by doing direct entry. Um, you also, uh, MATLAB is smart enough that you don't need to put the commas in. You actually, if you put spaces in there, you could define your vector just by doing two space five space seven space one space three. Um, it's just usually when I write it down uh, to avoid confusion, I usually put the commas in. That way, it's understood what the values are, and you don't get <clears throat> you don't get them mixed up. So that's the direct entry way. Now. <clears throat> Imagine if um, you were trying to create a vector. That's okay because there are only five values in that vector. But what if I'm trying to create a vector uh, that's got 100 values in it, that's got 1,000 values in it, um, things like that? Um, it, it may behoove me to have a different way to enter vectors. And so this next way is, is very important. You'll learn how to use this. It's called um, using a range, and using the range operator. Um, and it has um, a couple of forms, but its general form is, so if I'm going to do vector B, its general form is I'm going to start off, and I don't need that bracket, I'm sorry, I'm going to start off with um, three colon, well that's the wrong way to start. Um, its basic form is start colon step colon stop. Okay, um, and so if I were going to do this, an example would be okay. Um, create a vector b equals start at zero. Step two, stop at 10. That is the equivalent as if I had written 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Those are equivalent. Uh, this is a shorter way for me to do it. So if I wanted to do, let's say, vector C that had all the even values between 0 and 100, I would simply do 0 colon 2 colon 100. Okay. Now, this last value here may or may not be included. For example, let's say I did vector D and it was 0 colon 2 colon 11. Right? then that would be the same as writing 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. But it, I can't end on the 11 because I'm going to try to step 2. The next value would be 12, but 12 is past my end value or my stop value, so therefore I stop at 10. So this value here may or may not be included depending on how the step and the start work out. So that's that's the range operator. Um, <clears throat> do a lot of different things with it. Uh, let's go over here. Uh, another example would be uh, let's say if I said vector e equaled um, start at ten, step negative two, and end at negative two. Right. So this one would be equivalent to. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0, negative 2, right? 
And so you can do a lot of interesting things here. Um, there is a short court cut form, a shortcut form of, um, of this range um, where it's not a start stop, it, excuse me, not a start step stop, but it is a just a start colon stop. And what happens in this case is the step is assumed to be one. And so if I just said f equals uh, f equals zero colon uh, four, then that would be the equivalent of zero one two three four because the step is assumed to be one. And so this is a very common way to define vectors um, here. And so that's the range operator. Now I'm going to show some examples of how to create vectors with MATLAB. And once again, I'm, I'm going to do basically what, uh, what I did just on the board and just sort of point out some features that go on in MATLAB. Um, let's do, and I know on the board I did capital letters for the variable names. Um, it's just usually as a matter of example, but let me use lowercase here for uh, the variable names. And as you, as I pointed out earlier um, in the series, um, that you should use lowercase in terms of uh, your variable names. So uh, let's do vector A, lowercase vector A equals 2, comma, 5, comma, 7, comma, 1, comma, 3. Uh, that's one way to create a vector. It's called doing it with direct entry. And so, um, also let me point out here, I'm going to put some comments in there. Uh, you start off with a percent sign and I'll put direct entry. Um, and the comments, once again, do not execute when the scripts or a function execute. They're just notes for humans to, um, to um, put in to help themselves understand what's going on. Um, so there is vector A, um, and I will uh, save this script. When I try to run it for the first time, it will, it will save. Uh, and I will entitle this uh, my vector intro. intro. Okay. Then uh, I want you to notice over here in the workspace, um, it ran it. I had a semicolon here, so it did not show up down here. That vector did not show up down here in the command window because this semicolon here suppressed it from doing so. Um, but it did show up here in the workspace because we have variable A now, and it's assigned this value, uh, and the value is a vector, um, and it's of type double. So it, it, it tells you that it is of class double, so there are numbers in there. Uh, so that's the simple way that you can direct entry a vector. I mean, you could put any, any values in there. As I said um, on the board as well, you do not need the the commas, you can do it this way, um, and it works just fine. Um, once again, it shows the commas here, but that's just to indicate that it's a vector. And over here, uh, that's the vector A, um, and it has the values in it 2, 5, 7, 1, and 3. Um, also talked about another way to enter data, excuse me, enter information to a vector, and that's using the range operator, which will have great importance as we go forward. Um, so using the the values that we used on the slide, uh, let's define vector B. And keep in mind, let me do another comment here. We're going to do vector B. And keep in mind, it's start colon step colon stop. So it's where you start your vector, where you, how many units are between each item in the vector, and where you stop. And keep in mind, you, the stop value may not be included in the vector. So if I do vector, vector B, and that equals 0 colon 2 
colon 10. And I suppress the output. It's not going to show up down here, but it will show up over here. Um, if you look, I just created the vector 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Um, so that's the same as if I would have done B equals 2, uh, excuse me, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Same thing. So they're equivalent. It's just that this one, especially when you get very large vectors or even medium-sized vectors, it's just a lot easier to do it using the range if you can figure out um, a nice, clean way to do the range. Um, vector C equals, um, once again, a much larger vector, 2 colon to 100. Uh, let me not suppress the output this time and, and run this. If you notice, it created uh, columns 1 through 19, and then it shows columns 20 through 38. So those are all the elements in the vector, uh, 0 all the way to 100. If I typed in a million, it would try to do a million. Uh, you noticed over here, it got a little too big for it to show it. So it puts this notation in here. It says 1 by 5, 1 double. What that means is this has, um, it is a vector that is one column, excuse me, one row by 51 columns of doubles. And that's what this is. So it just got too big for it to put in here. Um, so it, 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 it indicates that by this. Um, likewise, uh, suppress that next on the next run. Uh, likewise, I could do uh, vector D, and that could equal... Um, 0, colon, 2, colon, 11. And when I do that, you're gonna, we're going to wind up with the same thing we did when we had B. And the reason is, is because this 11 um, is not a full step of 2, and so it doesn't show up. And that's what I was talking about. Uh, the end value, the stop value, may not show up in the vector. Next up, you, it's possible to go backwards. So if we go from 10 and we step negative 2. You could have stepped negative 1, negative 3, doesn't matter. Uh, and we take it all the way to the value negative 2. So we'll stop at negative 2. We run that and what we get is the vector 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0, negative 2. Uh, start at 10, uh, stop at negative 2, and increment by negative 2 each time. Um, there is a bit of a shortcut. If I only want to step one unit between each one, um, it sort of defaults to one unit. So if I did uh, f equals uh, 0, colon, 4, then it's going to assume, since there are only two values here, that this is the start value, 0, and 4 is the stop value, and that there is no, then the step is just one step in between. And so when we run this, you get the value 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and so that is uh, the, those are two basic ways to create a vector, one with data in, direct entry and one with the range operator. And we will see the range operator over and over again, so get used to what the colons are, that it is start, step, stop.